All right, people, so we're finally dormant here in Pennsylvania. We've had enough nights that really dipped down in the low 20s. We had a 22 degree Fahrenheit low, a 21 degree low, and then last night was a 20 degree low. And from here, we're gonna get a bit warmer. Uh, thank goodness, because it's been so cold here. And it was very quickly uh, that a lot of us haven't really had a chance to adapt to this cold just yet. Um, and personally, <laughs> I'm a bit freezing out here today, but we're gonna come out here and we're gonna prune my in-ground trees. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm pruning my in-ground trees this winter time. Um, I have my bread bags here that I'm gonna be putting them into. That way I can eliminate a lot of that moisture loss. And then I also have myself a Sharpie. And the Sharpie is going to label the variety name onto that bread bag and that way I can keep track of what I've got. And I think it's important first, before we get into the actual pruning, talk about my objectives here. With pruning, you need to have an objective in mind. And for me, I'm trying to get as much fruit as possible and I'm trying to cover these trees the best I can this winter time because if I were to just leave them like this, unprotected, a lot of them would die all the way down to the ground, to the very base of the, of the plant, about to where the soil is, and have to re-sprout from that point. And if that happens, it's just not ideal. You lose a lot of fruit. Uh, the trees wake up and seem to get going about two weeks later. Whereas if we can preserve some of this wood here, um, if we can preserve this and get it through the winter time, we'll be about two weeks ahead of the game. And uh, not only that, but we'll have more fruit because the more wood, the more wood in general that we leave on these trees, the more productive these varieties will be the following year. Um, it's just a matter, it's just a fact. So if you want more fruit, have a bigger tree. If you want less fruit, you wanna have a more contained size to it, then that's what you gotta do. You know, you got, you'll end up with less fruit and it's just a trade-off here that we have to do. So uh, for me, in my climate, I can't really let these trees ever really get that big because the cold will kill them anyway. So my objective here was to plant them so close together. In fact, they're only three feet apart. Three feet apart uh, both ways. You know, this way and going forward into this row. So there's two rows here. And it's just a nice little way that I can mass protect these figs by simply cutting them all back to about six to 12 inches, preserving some of that wood and then covering all that with a tarp. We're gonna come in here, we're probably gonna put some like vole traps down or rodent poison or paint the trunks. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna cover this whole thing. This whole area here is gonna get covered with a tarp on top of that is going to go some mulch, some straw, some other insulative materials that I have maybe around the house. And we're just going to throw that over top of every individual root ball. And that's going to basically protect every single tree throughout the winter time. So this is one way to do it. It's my personal way of doing it. You can wrap these trees and if you were to wrap them, this would be a totally different exercise in pruning. And uh, maybe we'll do that as well. We'll show you guys how to wrap them this winter time. But I think in terms of pruning, it's pretty simple, right? Um, if you're wrapping them, select a number of canes, a number of trunks from the base, right? They should all be grown in a bush form, which is what we've got here for the most part. You can see this Nero 600M is probably a really good example. You wanna bring together all these canes. You wanna tie them all up cut them off at a certain height and let them branch out from that height. And if you protect enough wood by cutting off these tips, at least at the very least cut off some of these tips. If you do that, these trees will branch out really nicely the following year and be very productive. Uh, I think at the bare minimum with our trees, if we want some production in the ground, we need to at least take off this growth tip here. Uh, otherwise, our production, I think, is a bit limited, and this is really to the extent that I recommend pruning, though. You know, if you really want the most fruit possible, 
we're only gonna take off this tip, just like that. In fact, the tip didn't even come off. <laughs> but we're only gonna take that off. That's gonna net us the most fruit possible. We want uh, a little bit more fruit, a little bit, uh, a little bit less fruit, but we wanna control the size. We're gonna do some light pruning, which is, let's say, three to four inches of growth. So we'll take off the tip and a couple buds off the top. That's light pruning. Then we can do medium sized pruning, which is more around six, six inches of growth to eight inches. Then we can go into harder pruning, like I'm doing today is a very, very hard prune, but this is gonna happen anyway. I have no choice. This is something that, because there's so many trees in here. I mean, just in this row, I think it's 26 feet long. And uh, I guess we could count real quickly, but I would imagine it's probably close to 30 trees just in this little area. So if I were to cover, wrap every single tree, that's a lot of work. So this is just, again, for my objectives, for what I'm trying to do, it all makes sense. And realistically, this is all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna take cuttings. And I'm gonna cut them at the right length, the right amount of buds. I'll put you guys down here. I should have a, probably a tripod, a better tripod for this here, guys, but See if I can get you guys a decent view of what I'm doing. So that's decent. Let's let's hopefully you guys can see something here. I'll move you guys around for some other trees, but I'm just really going to come in here and take out wood that I think is the appropriate length and size for something that you would root, for something that you would uh, you would maybe even sell. And again, I'm cutting this all the way down to six to ten inches off the ground. This is a variety here called Neruciola de Elba. And it's a personal, it's become a very personal favorite of mine. And my plan is to propagate as many of these, this variety for myself. Um, we're gonna take off all these figs if there's anything left on here, any leaves, take, out all, take the, all that off here, guys. But because it's a personal favorite, we're, gonna, we're not selling any of this, we're propagating all of it for myself because I wanna make as many copies of this fig as I humanly possibly can. Um, and look, we're already down to about 18 inches. I'm gonna keep going here. Really, there's no science to what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm pretty much at this point just getting the height uh, to the right height that I want. And then I'm gonna cut this down. Unfortunately, this tree only has a couple branches coming from the base. But by doing such a severe prune like this, what we're essentially going to do is encourage this tree to put out all kinds of new branches this, uh, this next season. So even though we just chopped all this out, what's gonna now happen, and I'm gonna go even lower here, cause this is 18 inches. I'm gonna go even lower and this is really thick, so you should probably get yourself a saw. That's a bit tricky here. All right. But this, I think, is about the height that I I'm looking for. And because I'm, I'm chopping it down so low, this is now gonna branch out all along this branch. And I'm gonna be able to select the number of branches that I want. And I can rub some of these off. Let's say I don't want a certain branch. Maybe I have a branch growing out this way already towards me. But maybe I want a branch growing out this way. So I can rub off some of these and really get this into the nice form and a controlled form, right? I don't want to have too much of this growth. I don't want to have too many fruiting branches because this is so dense. I want to control this planting here into what I want. So this is one example here. Neruccio Adelba. I can even go even lower. And this is also going to encourage new branches from the base. New suckers that come up from the roots, from lower down underneath the soil. And we're going to be able to set ourselves up here with ideally a system that's not one or two branches that we're covering in the wintertime, but instead six. If I had six branches in here like this, that look just like this, they then can branch out six different from six different points 
and form, I think, a, a stronger base, a more productive base, a more productive tree. Um, and in the long run, I think I'm going to be a lot happier that way, a lot more productive that way. But this is just year one of this. This is exactly year one. Last year, this tree, this is two-year-old growth we're looking at. This was the growth that I had in a pot last year. And now that we put it in the ground in the spring, it's, it's put out all this new growth. But um, that's kind of what we're doing here. So this one's already been chopped down. This is the trace is place right here. And you can see this is exactly like very similar to what we have in that there's a branch here, there's a branch here. We have a really small branch here that could turn into something next year. And then that one doesn't have any branching. So we're gonna start that branching at the, at the point that we want. And that's all it is. Um, let's move on to the next tree here. This guy down here, Bass's favorite, didn't really grow all that well, but I am noticing in this that this is some dead wood. We're gonna cut that out. And uh, this variety will be all right. And what I'll do is I'll take off the tip. Not a whole lot of growth. This is maybe like f three inches of growth, really weak, a really weak tree. Um, but that should get off to a nice start next year. And really that'll be like year one for that, for that tree. We also have over here uh, some varieties that I just basically stuck them in the ground. There was nothing really more to it than that. And uh, I'm gonna cut some of this out over here. So you guys can kind of better see the full scope of this. But we have one cutting that took, two cuttings, three, four, five. This one looks the best. Six, this one looks pretty good as well. And then seven. And you can see that I'm not really going to touch all this too much. Um, I could, I guess, dig up some of these and put them somewhere else. I could uh, put them in a pot. I could do any number of things I want right now because everything's dormant. But this particular tree and this particular planting, I think I'm going to leave this alone until a year uh, next year. I'm probably not going to do a whole lot to that because this is so young, so fresh. What I could do is if I really thought about this is come in here and take out like this branch right here. And then that way this branch can kind of grow towards the center. And then that way I'm not having more of this encroaching some other uh, tree. This is a Colonel Littmans. And we're going to do the same thing. We have basically three trunks here at the base already. And I'm just going to try and take as much wood off of this as I can. Um, and propagate this. And that's, that's about it. That's as, pretty much as far as I want to go. We have this branch over here. And this one is too small to take a cutting from, but I will take the tip off. That simple. This little guy over here, another small tree. This is uh, Negra de Agde. And we're gonna do the same thing, exactly what we just did. But instead, it's gonna branch, it's gonna get cut all the way down to this structure here. And I think what I'll do is I'll leave some of this up here. So we're gonna make some cuts a little bit after this video to sort all these cuttings out. But you can see this branching here that's already started. I'm gonna leave some of that in. And that way the tree can make kind of a judgment call as to what it wants to do. You know, leave it something here. I'm gonna bring you guys over to a larger tree that is a, probably a better example of, uh, of this strategy here. Here we have a Smith, put out two branches. They're almost, uh, they're about four to five feet tall. And I'm really just gonna come in here again and cut this all the way down to the base. And that will be it. This will be used as cuttings. We'll chop this up. Same thing with this branch. Now let's look at my Nero 600M here. This one's now been in the ground. This is in its, uh, this is now its second year in the ground. It's second season. And it didn't fruit all that much for me. I don't really expect a whole lot from these trees, even only in their second year. It's not really a whole lot because 
you think about it, this tree really looked like the trees I showed you in the beginning of the video. They really didn't, and even just, you know, three minutes ago, they really don't do, they're not doing all that well. They're, they're still acclimating themselves. They're still putting out a lot of roots. So this is really only technically, I guess you could say year one, right? Because it really hasn't done mostly anything. Now this is really the first year that it's, uh, it's really acclimated itself. It's really done anything. And now it's actually, it's taller than me. You know, this is over six feet tall, this particular variety. So what I'm just going to do is, you know, clear off all these leaves. This has got to come off anyway. And I'm going to take off some of these figs. Actually, there's a fig right here that is ripe. We'll get to eat that. But I want to show you guys the base of what I do here to this tree. So this is a branch. In fact, I've carefully selected this, this tree in the beginning of the season, in the spring, I made sure I, I limit the number of canes at the base on every single variety that I grow. I don't want to have too much growth coming from the base. And on this one here, we're going to cut it down to about that height. That's one cutting. Um, same thing over here. And um, some of these trees, guys, I really need to have myself <laughs> a saw. This growth is so thick. Even though it's one-year-old wood, it's just so thick. We're going to come down in here, uh, do the same thing. I like this bud back here where my hand is, my finger is. That one's growing outwards, so we're going to cut above that outward growing bud. And... Uh, we're gonna cut this branch off as well to an outward growing, outward facing bud. We actually have some scale on the branches here. It's good to uh, rub that off right now while you can. And where was that cut that I made? You know what, I think I'm gonna bring it all the way down to here instead. To an outward facing bud. <sighs> really need a saw, rookie mistake. And that's sort of it, guys. We're gonna cut this last one out the same exact way. I'm gonna see if these figs are even edible over here. Probably not. It don't look too bad. But let's try it. Nah. Very underripe. So we're just gonna take off all of this. And we're gonna finish that tree off. Not a big deal. This is exactly, once again, how every single tree will be. We're gonna paint them or put down some vole protection and just cover them with insulation. And that, that heat from the earth is really gonna make everything warm and get that through the winter. So thank you guys for watching this one. We'll talk to you soon. Subscribe, take care. We'll see you for tomorrow's video.